India has enjoyed a long history of mutually beneficial relations with Russia. Today, India is the world's largest buyer of Russian military hardware, accounting for 20% of Moscow's orders. This works out to $13 billion worth of Russian defense equipment over the past five years. The reality of why India feels they need to work with Russia is far more complicated than you might imagine, and it all has to do with their attempts to build an economy and military powerful enough to counter what they believe is their biggest threat, their neighbor China. And their economic ties go even deeper than that. Today, India has become the third largest buyer of Russian oil at $24 billion annually. But this partnership is now being tested after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. I'm going to attempt to untangle the complicated, messy relationship between India, Russia, China, and the United States. Be forewarned, I will likely stumble and fall short at doing this topic justice because I'm just an average infantryman. But I think it's important for soldiers to struggle to understand the type of geopolitics that might end up dragging them to war someday. So in a nutshell, India wants to stand up to their rival China, but the only way they can do that is by working with Russia to get cheap oil and arms deals. Meanwhile, the United States also wants India to stand up to China, but at the same time, they don't want India to work with Russia. But India needs to work with China at least a little so they can avoid avoid becoming too influenced by the United States and vice versa. All the while, all India really wants is to grow their economy in peace and lift their people out of poverty. It all makes perfect sense if you don't think about it. In order to understand India's complicated relationship with Russia, we need to recognize that this is nothing new. India has maintained political, economic, and strategic ties with Moscow ever since the Cold War, something that Washington has been upset about, we could say. In fact, the US is preparing a military aid package for India worth reportedly up to $500 million. If this deal went through, it would make India one of the largest recipients of US military aid, behind only Israel and Egypt. This is designed, of course, to curb India's long historical reliance on Russian and Soviet military equipment. Because even though India has close ties with Russia, they're also considered a strong ally of the United States. And this is key to understanding India's strategy. Of course, Moscow is obviously upset about India's close relationship with the United States. Apparently, it's considered controlling to tell your friends who they can and cannot be friends with. I don't know, I don't have friends. Since Russia's invasion, India's appetite for Russian oil has swelled, given its current discounted low, low prices. An appetite that makes Russia India's top oil supply. Russia, which made up just 0.2% of India's oil imports prior to March 31st, 2022, was supplying 9 million barrels per day of crude oil to India by November later that year, making up more than a fifth of India's oil supplies. This has caused some concerns that India's increased purchases of Russian oil has undermined Western efforts to incapacitate Moscow via economic sanctions. Consequently, these purchases may indirectly support Russia's military operations in Ukraine, given that fossil fuels make up approximately three-fifths of Russian exports. The logic that Russian oil sanctions will curb Russian military aggression still holds. The caveat being, though, that the international community and not just the North American and European countries commit to such a strategy. The Indian government has been vehemently defending its trade with Russia, though, saying it makes sense to source oil from where it's cheapest. And it's easy to forget that this works two ways. India buying billions of dollars of oil from Russia might give them some leverage and a level of influence over what Russia does. From India's perspective, this cheaper oil helps their economy and gives them a much needed economic and strategic edge against China. Though energy, or the onslaught of scrutiny by the West for its energy needs, is not the key driver in India's changing relationship with Moscow, we'll learn how the key driver of India Russia relations post-Cold War is actually China. But we're in a situation where India is being pulled in two different directions, just like they have been for almost a century. And so we see India trying to remain neutral. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has not outright condemned Russia's invasion, but he has called for dialogue and diplomacy to solve the conflict. The decisions India makes here and now will have major ramifications for the world over the next few decades. However, as Russia's invasion of Ukraine drags on, and India's stance towards the conflict comes under increasing scrutiny from the West, 
Western observers interpret this Indian hesitancy to follow international sanctions on Russia as some kind of implicit support for Moscow. But India's position on the conflict is actually far more complicated than many might appreciate. A closer look at recent Indian foreign policy reveals quiet but significant steps to reduce New Delhi's dependence on Moscow. India is now looking to produce 50% of their defense needs and equipment from domestic defense companies within their own country. And they're looking to further diversify by turning to Eastern European nations to purchase new military gear and ammunition. India is geopolitically important because their nation has a massive population of 1.4 billion people. India's GDP is growing at a rapid rate, up to $3.1 trillion USD today. India produces 9.2% of the world's iron ore, the fourth largest producer. And iron ore is extremely important in production of steel, which is used in all the infrastructure projects across Asia. And the reason I think this is important to all of us is India has been known as the largest democratic nation in the entire world. So they're a counterweight to authoritarian communist China, but pressures on that democratic system and the country's stability could end all that. Which brings us to India's relationship with Russia. But I think India's foreign relations with Russia can be best summed up with what happened during the March 2023 Raisina Dialogue. The Raisina Dialogue is India's premier geopolitics forum held annually in New Delhi. During the event, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov was making a speech to an audience of India's strategic and military establishment, you know, officers and policymakers. Lavrov then described the Ukraine conflict to them as a war that was launched against Russia. This ignited laughter from his audience because of the absurdity of that claim. This is evidence that India's military leaders know exactly what Moscow is up to and they don't buy into Putin's propaganda. However, what was omitted from most news reports about that is that there was was actually a lot of applause and general indifference towards Lavrov throughout most of his time speaking. On social media, Indian commentators voiced a range of opinions on Lavrov's comments on the conflict, from asserting India's neutrality to maintaining pragmatic ties with Russia based on India's material needs to active suspicion of the West. According to Dmitry Segoviev, the head of Russia's Federal Service for Military Technical Cooperation, he said, Despite the unprecedented pressure on India from Western countries, led by the United States in connection with Russia's special operation in Ukraine, it continues to be one of Russia's main partners in the field of military technical cooperation. But I think what Russia is mistaking is India's goal to build a strong economy and military as a sign that they're politically aligned with Russia. Assuming that you are in the West like I am, admittedly it's not easy to understand India's relationship with Russia right now, but we need to try to understand India's perspective here and see why neutrality is actually a very deep part of India's foreign policy DNA. This is because when India gained their independence from the British Empire in August of 1947, at the time, Indian policymakers had to figure out what kind of foreign policy path they would take. They wanted to follow a path that would avoid them becoming dependent on a superpower. Following World War II at this time, the United States and the Soviet Union came out as the two largely intact great powers, and they wanted the exact opposite. One way to look at it is that the US and the Soviets wanted as many allies to become dependent on them as possible. From this backdrop, the important concept of non-alignment movement emerged, a strategy that many newly independent nation states used to maintain their newly gained independence. But how could countries that are still developing and less powerful hope to stand up to superpowers? with counterbalancing. India and the other nations would kind of play each superpower against the other in order to remain neutral to avoid getting pulled into the US or Soviet political and strategic orbit. Indian policymakers during the 1940s and 60s were key architects of this movement. India's first prime minister was a pioneer of the non-alignment movement. He summed it up when he said, quote, we propose as far as possible to keep away from the power politics of groups aligned against one another, which have led in the past to world wars and which may again lead to disaster on an even vaster scale. So from India's point of view, it's essential to world peace to avoid allying with one group or another. 
And this is important to understand because it describes what's happening today in many ways. The foreign policy principle of strategic autonomy was at the heart of India's non-aligned stance. What this means is that India sought to maintain autonomy over its foreign policy decision making without being constrained by the strategic ambitions of either the US or Soviet Union. However, the relationship between India and the Soviet Union was always kind of warmer, at times even closely aligned. Indian policymakers believed that the Soviet Union could provide valuable resources and insights for their country, which was committed to achieving rapid industrialization while also reducing poverty and stark economic disparities. The Soviet Union, on the other hand, at first saw India and other former colonial states following World War II as undeserving of Soviet aid because from their perspective, India was still governed by their former colonial rulers. However, following Stalin's death in 1953, the Soviet Union's ideological stance changed radically. In November 1955, there was a major turning point here. Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev became the first to visit India. The Soviets signed an agreement to support a steel plant, which was revolutionary at the time. It was the first deal that the Soviet Union had made outside the communist bloc. It was a major move for the Soviets away from economic isolationism of the Stalin years. Soon after, they would establish their framework with India, which would have three main pillars. One, economic development. Two, science and technology. Three, defense of the Soviet-India relationship. To say this was a big deal would be an understatement. The cooperation between India and the Soviet Union in exports went from $0.5 million in 1953 to exploding to $235 million in 1964. The imports and loans followed the similar trend, and at the same time we saw Russia move into India's energy market by offering them oil at $0.25 cents per barrel cheaper. Sound familiar? But New Delhi was always careful to avoid becoming too closely aligned with Moscow. Moscow. However, that juggling act became really difficult once the Soviet Union became India's primary arms and military supplier and security partner instead of the West. See, after 1964, the Soviet Union emerged as the primary supplier of arms to India for all three branches of its military. Ordnance Factory Medka, a major manufacturing of military equipment plant in India, employs 3,000 people. They create the Russian BMP vehicles there. India's armed forces operates about 2,500 BMP-2s. India has a combined total of over 4,000 Russian-style T-series tanks, including the T-90 and T-72, but they're only now switching to Western style equipment with their new Arjun tank and there are plans to produce a domestic replacement for the BMP. But the point of all of this is to say that historically speaking, the Soviet and Indian militaries have been operationally tied for a long time, with Indian defense personnel receiving training from Soviet-made weapons. Moreover, India would receive critical military, economic, and diplomatic assistance from the Soviet Union in times of crisis. For example, the Soviets successfully brokered peace between India and Pakistan over the Second Kashmir War in 1965. Additionally, the Soviet Union contributed significantly to the development of India's public sector economy through technical assistance and aid, particularly in heavy industries such as steel making and energy production. The US, on the other hand, champion of private enterprise, was less supportive of state-run industries in India. This created more opportunities for the Soviet Union to expand its commercial ties with India. The Soviet Union played a key role in supporting India's early nuclear program. They provided technical assistance and materials for the construction of India's first nuclear reactor. Today, India is one of seven countries in the world with nuclear weapons. The India-Soviet relationship expanded so far it went to space. This isn't to say there were no bumps in the relationship along the way, but it remained strong until the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991. India was then forced to reevaluate its ties with the United States following the collapse of the Soviet Union. They decided, hey, it'd be nice to be friends with the winner of the Cold War, maybe. India then emerged as a major defense partner of the United States. But cutting ties with another nation like Russia, even if you no longer align with them, is often difficult and takes a long time for a number of reasons. For one, Russia continues to be India's key supplier of defense equipment, accounting for a significant portion of India's defense imports. As a legacy of Indo-Soviet Cold War relations, around 85% of India's military equipment at the turn of the 21st century was of Soviet origin, leading to a prolonged reliance on Moscow for spare parts and modified versions of Soviet-made firearms, missiles, and aircrafts. 
New Delhi has continued to collaborate with Moscow on the development of a range of modern defense systems, such as the Brahomos cruise missile, as well as the purchase of Russian-made S-400 anti-air missile defense systems, which it signed for in October of 2018 and began receiving back in late 2021. But who would India side with if the shit hit the fan? Who would India really join if World War III were to kick off tomorrow and the roosters came home to roost and the cows came back to cowing? The answer is tough to say. I'm biased, but personally, I would like to think that they would side with the United States, even though today India has continued to be guided by the principle of strategic autonomy. This is often misinterpreted though as India having some kind of aversion to alliances. But the fact is that since 1991, India has found itself involved in increasingly more and more bilateral and multilateral strategic partnerships with more than 30 other countries at this point. Multilateral relations and international affairs is basically like being in a polyamorous or an open relationship. For instance, India is a member state of both the Quadlateral, Quadlateral Security Dialogue, Quad, and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SCO. The former being a strategic partnership often described as a counterweight to China's assertiveness, the latter viewed as a counterweight to US hegemony. Though it is important to note that neither the Quad nor the SCO are military alliances. In layman, average infantryman terms that even I could understand, in Barney style, these groups are simply forums where member countries can discuss their insecurities and ambitions as a group, like adults. Now where can I go to discuss my insecurities? Unlike NATO, there is no Article 5, equivalent for the Quad, or the SCO, that forces military action of any kind. But one of the biggest ties for India and Russia is the multilateral partnership of BRICS. For Moscow, BRICS is primarily about geopolitics, countering US hegemony, while New Delhi has long been understood to frame their involvement in BRICS in terms of economic benefits. BRICS partnerships with Russia has had several economic benefits for India, one being India's energy security. As India's population and economy continues to grow, that their demand for energy continues to rise, leading to India ongoing reliance on oil imports for its energy needs. So behind BRICS and India's strategic partnership with Russia is this shared idea of a multipolar world. This shared idea of building a multipolar world whereby a, a concert of non-Western powers limit the influence of the United States and its allies in Eurasia involved a powerful China. This concept has often been dubbed the strategic triangle or Russia, India, China triangle, but I wouldn't exactly call it a love triangle because both India and Russia are concerned about China's military and economic power that's outpacing them. Now we can again see why India and Russia have this incentive to cooperate on security issues in order to balance against China's military influence. This is important because if Russia becomes weaker and more dependent on China, we could see Putin take action against India's interests in order to help China. If that sounds crazy, there's actually historical precedence for this. The Soviet Union delayed their delivery of the MiG-21 aircraft to India in order to gain China's support during the Cuban Missile Crisis. There's currently an Indian debate on whether their nation still has meaningful ability to influence Moscow. Could India help prevent a Russian drift towards China? New Delhi's purchase of discounted crude oil from Moscow following Western oil sanctions could be seen in this light. As India imported 21 billion USD in Russian crude oil from April to December 2022, accounting for 17.1% of its total crude imports. This theoretically though, could give India some leverage over Moscow. But India has also taken some important steps to protect themselves by diversifying. Some of those recent moves are the following. In 2021, India ceased the import of over 100 defense items to boost domestic production of defense equipment. The ban includes items like artillery guns, assault rifles, and transportation aircraft, which were mostly imported from Russia. The move is part of the Make in India initiative, which aims to boost domestic manufacturing and reduce dependence on imports. In the energy sector, in 2020, India signed a deal with the United States to purchase liquefied natural gas as part of its efforts to diversify its energy resources and reduce dependence on Russia. The deal includes the supply of 6 million metric tons of LNG per year for 20 years, with the first shipment expected to arrive in 2024. 
strategic partnerships. In 2021, you might not know this, but India and Japan signed a memorandum of understanding to enhance cooperation in the defense sector. The MOA includes joint research development and production of defense equipment, which will help India reduce its dependence on Russia in the defense sector. India's recent purchase of military equipment from the US, as well as its collaboration with Japan on infrastructure projects, signal a growing willingness to diversify its foreign relations. India set an ambitious goal of reaching 175 gigawatts of installed renewable energy capacity by 2022 and achieving 119 gigawatts of this by November 2022. These quiet but significant steps suggest that India is actively seeking to balance its relationship with Russia and the West rather than playing favorites. The ongoing conflict in Ukraine has raised concerns about the deepening alliance between Russia and China and the potential implications for India's strategic interests. As India defense planners now prepare for the possibility of a weakened Russia that is more dependent on China, which could act against India's interests, India is likely going to navigate the changing security landscape by relying more on its diverse network of strategic partnerships. As India seeks to balance its relations with China, the US, and other strategic partners, its partnership with Russia will remain a critical component of its foreign policy. I'm your average infantryman. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys real soon.